I had to get a starter. That's a good one. It's a better one. Oh, look at that. Look at blind in one eye. <laughs> yes! How's it going? It's a big one. It can happen quick, though. We're ready to waste the fish, man. Let's do it. A five-fast limit! Wow! You got the lead! Wow! Arkansas's Travis Fox, Justin Atkins, Anthony Gagliardi. This is the most important thing of our season, is to get to the Forest Wood Cup. It's the championship of bass fishing. This is where you want to be at the end of the year. You etch your name in history. People talk about who won the Forest Wood Cup, and that's what's so awesome about it. You never know when your next one's going to be. It's been a lifelong dream of mine to make it here. Yeah, you want to win a tournament, but you're like, I want to make the cup. It's just the biggest deal fishing FLW. Number one goal is the Forest Wood Cup. $300,000, you know, and a one-time lick is a that's a pretty good lick, no matter what you do. Welcome everyone to Lake Murray in beautiful Columbia, South Carolina for the biggest tournament in bass fishing. And that's of course, the Forest Wood Cup. I'm Travis Moran alongside Rob Newell. And Rob, this tournament is what the anglers work all year long to get to. And to win the Forest Wood Cup, absolutely solidifies you among the best in the bass fishing industry. Yeah, Travis, this is the 18th Forest Wood Cup that I've been to. This is a tournament that changes careers. It changes lives. You get to land in the right spot, things happen quick. You can get rich quick here. I'm ready to make a chunk of change, get the ball rolling for next year. I got a bunch of friends and family here and everything, so it's awesome to have everybody here support me. The place that they have chose to hold this contest this week is one of the toughest in the southeast. Lake Murray, South Carolina, doesn't have much current, doesn't have much timber, doesn't have much grass. It's kind of a void out there. There's a lot of blueback herring that roam around that give these anglers absolute fits. A true test. We want to find out who the true champion is in 2017. This lake is going to throw a lot of variables at them, and when it shakes out on day three, we will find out who the true champion is. It's going to be stressful. It's always stressful in the Forest Wood Cup. Every term is stressful, but this one's extremely stressful. The last time we were here, Travis, Anthony Gagliardi won offshore on schooling yes. fish. He beat Scott Canterbury by one ounce, and Scott was up in the river throwing at grass, fishing shallow. Two completely different ways of fishing, two completely different styles. One ounce separated them, and I think you're gonna see the same kind of thing this week. Once we get out here and I make my first cast, then all, everything's back to normal, and it's all about just catching a bass. There's only 53 invites that were sent out, and they are here, they've laid out their game plans, a lot of different strategies I'm sure we're gonna see, but. The time for talking is done. Day one, baby, Forest Wood Cup 2017. It's all about the trophy. Let's get this thing started. Well, we got a little island here, and I'm fishing a little point that runs out off the side. And I'm going to fish it probably 10 or 15 minutes and, and just keep moving. We're just looking looking for some small small active schools you know hopefully maybe something will come up and break while we're here but it doesn't have to you know if these fish are just up here pulled up on these points roaming around hopefully i can call some up on this rob there's a lot of things you can say to to really hype up anthony but the one thing that really speaks the most for that is he is our defending champion here at at lake murray winning the 2014 Forest Wood Cup last time it was here. And, and I think that really shows what he can bring and what he, the potential that he has on this body of water. Gagliardi is the hometown hero here. He did it before. Everybody in this town that surrounds this lake would love to see Anthony do it again. That's a pretty good one here. Coming off of a win in 2014, I had a pretty good uh, blueprint, you know, that I thought might would work again. And so that's just what I've followed. You know, I basically, have, have done exactly the same thing. Um, maybe fine tune a couple things here and there. I had to get a starter. I was gonna go with what I was good at and, and fish a deeper pattern like that and, and just, just hope it holds up. That'll start today. This is the way you wanna start your forest wood cup right here. Yes. 15 minutes into the day and this is your first bite. 
Nice three and a half pounder, guys. Wow, the repeat could be underway right now. And two former Forest Wood Cup champions right here, side by side. Rob, no one has ever won two Forest Wood Cups. We've got a lot of guys in contention to do that. What do you think the chances of us seeing uh, history broken here this weekend? It continues with every cup, obviously. I mean, the more fast winners you get, the better the chances when they, when they re-qualify. I think it could go down this week. There's a big school of fish here, but if they're not schooling, I just saw there's probably 10 fish around that cane pile. I don't know if somebody just fished it, maybe they're a little shy or whatever, but it's just timing. Now that I know where they are, maybe I hit this in the next hour and a half in my rotation and catch two fish off of it. Here on Lake Murray, I evaluated my options here, up shallow or out deep. I found a couple places out deep on these heron fish uh, that had some nice bass here. And what I've noticed is the quality. There's a lot of three to four pound fish mixed into these offshore fish. They're not everywhere, they're hard to find. You know, you can't just throw anything you want out there and catch them. You have to throw things like uh, a walk-in topwater bait. You know, and some days when it's when it's sunny, you want a certain color. When days it's cloudy, you want a different color. And then also like your soft plastic swim baits or flukes work really well. But the key here is just trying to trick them. A lot of times it's just speed of the reel, reeling it real fast through them. Don't let the fish get a real good look at it. And that's what I'm doing. Nice large mouth. I'm gonna stay offshore because I feel like that's my best opportunity to catch a consistent 15 to 20 pound bag. Good old man, good large mouth. Oh my gosh, it's a giant dude. You know, we've talked about, are these guys gonna split? Are they gonna go do something else? As long as you're catching fish like that and you know they're there and you're seeing 20 with them, Scott Martin and these guys are not leaving these areas. They can do this all day, especially with that cloud cover. Yeah! Oh. Oh. Hook fell out, baby. There's a bunch of them in there like that. That's gonna help. Mr. Martin, never disappointing. Hey, that's the size fish I need to win this tournament. Five of those a day, it could be uh, a good deal. And now our first look at Brandon Cobb, uh, a local to the area, definitely a favorite. I know you like him uh, to do very well in this tournament, Rob. Yeah, fantastic young man. He's uh, been in two Forest Wood Cups already and made the top 10 both times, and now we're in his backyard. That could only mean good things for Brandon. They're basically sitting there waiting on a, a heron to swim over. And uh, this topwater bait looks like a heron coming over, and that, that's all they're doing. They're sitting on structure waiting for a school with a heron to swim by. And I'm just trying to call them up. Problem is, with one bait like this, it's hard to get them to come up a lot, and with the clouds, they can't see it good. So you have to uh, just keep running a bunch of places until you get a school that's ready to bite. And some of the places we've already fished, there's fish on all of them. You just have to hit them a bunch of times until they do bite. Gah! Get it. Gah! Got that one. If that's a bass, it's a big one. Yeah, it's a big one. Don't go that way. Don't jump, don't jump, don't jump. <laughs> Give up. Oh my gosh, she's barely hooked. That's a good one. Caught two in a row and a big one. And that's number five, so now he's gotta get rid of them. A couple of little ones. We've got three little ones in there. Three, one, two, that's five. All right. Now it's time to try to get rid of some little ones. Topwater bite starting out a lot hotter than we expected, Rob. Yeah, Brandon Cobb's off to a blistering fast start, but it looks like Gagliardi might start closing the gap. A lot more action to come from the Forest Wood Cup when we return. The FLW Tour is brought to you by General Tire. Anywhere is possible. BRP Evinrude. Learn more at evinrude.com. You can get more from your oil with
Quaker State. Costa Del Mar, see what's out there. Ranger Boats, still building legends, one at a time. And by PowerPole, swift, silent, secure. We need a better one. Just gotta keep it up. This is the size and bigger we're gonna need. This is bass. Check them two out. <laughs> Easy does it right up in this boat. Somebody's gonna catch a big bag today, I feel like. And I just I hope I can survive. Welcome back, everyone. We're on Lake Murray in the beautiful town of Columbia, South Carolina, for the Forest Wood Cup. They got right out there. of the blocks super good. I'm I'm starting to wonder now what's to come. I mean, one thing about these schooling fish is, you know, it's not like they're John Cox back in a place like at Lake Wheeler kind of where he's where he's depleting the supply every day. This is a, you know, this is a, I'm not saying a limitless supply, but this is a better situation for these guys to keep bringing these kind of weights. As I mean, we watch Angler of the Year, Brian Thrift, break down this lake and uh, he is slowing down. We're seeing a lot of different things uh, in this tournament here at Lake Murray. Coming into this event after winning Angler of the Year, I mean, that's a that's a huge milestone first, but you know, it, it gives you confidence. I mean, I, I feel good on the water. I feel comfortable. It, I'm, I feel like I'm gonna get a bite. Even if I don't get a bite, I, I've kind of got the mind frame that, you know, the next place I go is gonna be the one or something like that. I mean, you, you really can't explain it. It's something that it just kind of comes over you. <laughs> there we go. Get out of the bush, pal. Oh, God. He's bigger than I thought he was. Oh, we got to leave here. <laughs> Look at that. We ain't throwing right there no more. We got to save something for tomorrow. And now get side-by-side -side perspective of two of our anglers here. The hometown favorite here, Gagliardi. Last time we were here, there were a couple days the afternoon was real key for Gagliardi on some key bites. You know, I'm not really fishing anything that looks um, odd. People would see where I'm fishing and they're like, yeah, that makes sense. It's obvious stuff. It's just, you know, points next to drops, you know, points next to uh, creek channels or river channels. I mean, there's usually deep water, you know, fairly close to where I'm fishing. Oh my goodness, dude. Come on, baby. It's better if it has a little bit of a, a, a sharp drop somewhere. But just, it, all they are is just places that, you know, if the fish can push the shad uh, and or herring. This just gives them an opportunity to push that bait up on top and, and, and come up and feed. And, and there's really, there's no secret to what I'm doing. Yes! I feel like I know more places where, where that kind of bite happens and so throughout the course of the day, just the law of averages, you know, works itself out and eventually I'm going to hopefully run over somewhere that's got some good fish on it that are actively feeding and I catch them. So. You got to be kidding me. <laughs> Gagliardi with a live well full of beautiful, healthy, largemouth bass. And that brings us to the end of day one. The cloud cover has produced a much better bite than anyone was expecting. Brandon Cobb's roommate, Justin Atkins, jumps into the lead, but the weights are so very close. The full field of anglers will get one more day to fish before we cut down to 10 for one final round of fishing. Justin Atkins here, day two. We got the lead, it's a slim lead over uh, Anthony Gagliardi, which is kind of scary, but I'd rather be leading than chasing. We're gonna have to catch him every day. You know, I would have thought before this tournament, if I'd have caught 21 pounds, I could have kind of coasted the next two days and, and, and maybe had a shot to win, but that's not gonna be the case. Rob, it's day two and the excitement is in the air and you can see and feel every bit of it. Yeah, this is what the Forest Wood Cup is all about right here. Running into that beautiful sunrise, all of the crowd and everything's behind you. It is time to go to work and get this business done. A special day for all our 53 anglers, but uh, extra special for our top anglers, Atkins, Cobb, and then obviously our hometown guy, Gagliardi. It's the hardest part of the day for me, idling out. That's when I'm the most nervous. We gotta go though, it's time to go.
I about decided my best bet, start running as many places as I can and try to take a little bit of advantage of uh, some of the schooling activity they're wanting to do. I think with it sunny this morning, they're not they're not right in the brush. They're out around at Roman, which is, you know, what you'd think would be backwards to cloudy days, but for some reason cloudy days, they get right down in it and you can call them up out of there. But this morning, they're out roaming real bad. Justin Atkins, an incredible angler. His family's here, a huge support system from his family. They were emotional yesterday after just day one, you know, and you could just see that they're all invested in this struggle and in this passion with, uh, with Justin. If you guys don't know Justin, he is an easy guy to root for. He is a guy you want to succeed, and if he wins this thing, there aren't a lot of people that won't be, uh, you know, tip their cap to him and be like, hey, I'm glad he got his chance there. It was a big fish to swing in the boat, man. Oh, yeah, over, over the rail and in the pail, as they say on Wicked, Wicked Tuna. There you go. That's a good one. This is a spot that and my mom was practicing with me. It's kind of slick and calm, wouldn't catch a whole lot, and all of a sudden a four, four and a half pounder comes up and just blows up. I told her to set the hook. I look back, her pole's bent in two, so. I've been seeing some really big ones blow up up here. They're, they're chasing them herring six, eight inches long. I mean, really big fish eating on herring. So I decided to come up here. Now we're only in eight foot of water. Fish getting ready to bust right where my bait is. That is amazing. Got him that time. Travis Fox. Qualified through our Costa Series, couldn't be more happy to be here uh, at the Forest Wood Cup, but he's going to face some challenges if he plans on making it to day three. This one's pulling like a bass. Yeah, Travis, the biggest issue that uh, Travis Fox has is a limited number of places to fish. A lot of these guys, you take uh, uh, Anthony Gagliardi, uh, who lives here, and Justin Atkins, uh, who spent a lot of time here. They have a lot to select from. they got a lot of places to go. But Travis Fox just has a select few areas that oh, he's yeah. going to have to hunker down in and really mine the most that oh, he can get out hook. of it. How about that for a fatty? Oh, you know how much I love this fish? I'm gonna go Jimmy Houston on it. Mwah! That's good stuff right there. Yeah. There are a lot of guys fishing a clean tournament this weekend. People showed up with their A game, strapped their shoes, laced up the laces, and, and they're ready to go, man. They're bringing, they're leaving nothing out on this lake this weekend. Don't go anywhere, we will be right back. Three-pounder. Throw as far as I can, which is pretty far with 15-pound test. The big heavy bait and a 7-6 rod. That's a big one. You stop fish? That's what we're looking for. Got that one. Oh, my gosh. Got him. Not a lot bigger, but he's bigger. They all look like six-pounders when they eat it. I think a lot of them are fours that try to get it, but you never know. Go make one loop down these and come back to some of these. Welcome back, everyone. 2017 Forest Wood Cup here on Lake Murray in beautiful Columbia, South Carolina. Welcome to the Brandon Cobb Show. These are the moments you dream about. This is what the whole professional angling career is all about right here. Brandon Cobb found his rhythm again and quickly. I mean, it went, it went in a flash. Uh, he had zero fish to five fish really quickly, leading the whole pack right now. He knows he's doing the right things and his day is slowly curving towards him a little bit more. All these places I fished, I had practiced on them. I knew which ones had fish, which ones I thought had fish. But after fishing them in the tournament multiple times, I've kind of figured out which ones are more consistent. Like, I'm pretty confident I'll catch one on some places, and some I'm like, I might catch one, but I don't know. So I know which ones I need to try to spend the most time hitting or hit multiple times. And I also learned that if it's sunny again tomorrow, like it is today, I've got to make sure I'm in some of the prime areas at the right time. And I found one place today that's got a lot more fish. I caught fish off of it yesterday, but it's got a lot more than I thought it did. That's a big one. Brandon Cobb in an incredible groove. What Cobb is dialing in right now is the precise timing of how much time he that. needs to spend on each Stay stop. up today. Do I have two? I might have two. I feel like I've been in contention in this before, so I try to not put too much into it. Just go, go fishing again and 
not worry about it too much. I mean, the way this fishing is, I have no idea what I'll catch, and I can't think about winning because that that won't help me catch them. I mean, it's not gonna. You just need to catch as much as you can, regardless of what what it turns out. To be. That's kind we need right there. It's a grind today. But we can catch them. It's a big one. It's four and a half. Cobb is making this run and gun pay right now. now Gagliardi has not moved. He stayed on this spot. You know, he's he's alluded to other things that he's thinking about and everything, but he has stayed on that spot. He said there were some big fish in there. We started here, uh, didn't have a bite, and left, and I caught two, came back here. It probably, I mean, it was probably a little bit after 10 or so, and as soon as we got here, fish came up, and I lost a big one on top, and next cast, I caught a keeper. I mean, I've caught three keepers here or so. Um, it just shows you sometimes, man, the time of day. Um, the fish were probably here this morning. They just weren't, they weren't ready to eat. I don't know how big he is. The big fish are probably always biting, but they're not usually where most people are fishing. I mean, they're, they're either out there farther offshore, and when you get the clouds covered like that and some wind and some stuff like that, and they kind of, they just might, maybe they push in a little bit. And they're just a little more accessible under those conditions. So that's why that type of that type of condition sometimes it, it lends itself to better fishing more times than not. He's fat, though. Anthony Gagliardi, we, we coined him the host of this tournament because he was nice enough to invite everybody for the Forest Wood Cup to hang out in his backyard at, at his little home lake here. But he's going to make a good run at these guys, uh, Justin Atkins and Brandon Cobb right here. You can't count Gagliardi out because he's just got too many little puzzle pieces that. that he can that he can try out and see what fits. I've never seen this lake, so I come over and pre-practiced about three weeks ago. Long days, frustrating days, hard to stay with it. I don't know a thing about a herring. I don't even know what one is. I had to Google one to kind of look at the color, you know, match the hatch is what the fly fishermen say, right? I have watched the YouTube videos and stuff so many times of Canterbury and, and Gagliardi and everybody catching them last time we were here. That was what I felt was the best practice for me. Been really struggling in the afternoon. The bite really slows down for me. The good thing I have going on here is I've got some wind. I just need one more, one more good, solid, healthy fish, and I think I'll have enough to make the cut. My absolute best place, we, we named Mom's Place. I did spend a lot of time there today. Um, I'm confident that I'm milking it for all that it's worth. It's a good one. not gonna do is horse them today. Mom's spot's been good for me. It's, it's had six fish, the smallest one at three and a half pounds. Big old bass, big old bass. Come on, baby, I need you. We need you. <laughs> Boom! Boom! Look at that, mama. Right off mama's hole. Uh. Kendra, mom. You might want to go ahead and make reservations for another night. That is a game changer. This is cut day. This is moving day. Ooh, big Full day field, here. 53 anglers fish the first two days of competition, yep. trying to make the Buck Knives top 10 cut and fish another day. This is the day, because of that cut, where everybody lays it out and guys do not back off. We're ready to waste some fish, man. Let's do it. 16 pounds even, angler of the year, Brian Thrift. His rookie season, another solid five bass limit today. I'm just going to run what I can and do the best I can to, you know, try to catch him up. 19 pounds, four ounces, you got the lead. I caught him real quick and didn't really pay attention how big they were, but they are a little bigger than I anticipated. Our top 10 is set, and it is a stacked top 10. Tomorrow's weigh-in will be epic. And I guarantee you it'll come down to that kicker fish, $300,000 on the line and the title of Forest Wood Cup. The last day of competition in the Forest Wood Cup, there's no better day to be on the water. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with what got me here. You know, at least for the first half of the day, and as the day goes on, and we'll see what happens. Second place, going into the last day of the Forestwood Cup, the dream come true. We've got a pound, 13 ounces we got to make up. We're about to go get it done. The way the bite is, it doesn't last long. We got to catch them quick, and when they're biting, we got to be in the right place at the right time and put them in the boat. Can't lose fish. 
It's the 2017 Forest Wood Cup here on Lake Murray, and it is the third and final day. Championship Sunday, Rob. Somebody's walking home with $300,000. And of our 53 anglers that started this tournament, there's only 10 left. And that field of 10 is stacked. Stacked is correct, Travis. I mean, we're looking at three former Forest Wood Cup winners. Scott Martin's out there today. Scott Suggs, you can't forget also, what's that? Anthony Gagliardi, the hometown favorite. Also, let's take a look at the rookie class we got in the top 10. Two guys, Aaron Britt from out on the West Coast. How about this Justin Atkins rookie that's uh, showed up and made some waves the last couple days. We can't forget some a couple of the young guns too. Brandon Cobb and Michael Neal, both made the top 10 in the Forest Wood Cup last year. And last but definitely not least, we got two other anglers. The dark horse, Travis Fox, been fishing mama's spot, really just milking that one area with all it's got. And then Mr. Consistency, Brian Thrift. He is never out of any event. I don't care what his limit is. A lot of variables still up in the air, but there's only one way to find out who's gonna be holding up that check at the end of the day, and that's to go out and fish. Let's get this party started. Oh my gosh. Go, baby, go. Come on, come back and get it. <sighs> well, that's two big ones. Justin Atkins finished second place for Rookie of the Year and finishing the season on an amazing note. No matter where he finishes today, this was a killer season by Atkins. Starting out the day in the number two spot behind his roommate, Brandon Cobb. There's a big one. Oh, gosh. Come here, baby. Stay down. Stay down. Yes! Wow. He's missed seven blow-ups, you know. Obviously, things are getting more and more tense as we run out of time on this uh, tournament here, even though there's plenty of day left. That's how you start the last day of the cup! I just got those yeah. chills right there. Travis just went, woo! <laughs> Rob, I was thinking the same thing, man. I mean, this is the biggest stage there is. Justin Atkins, a passionate, passionate angler, has earned every bit of success he's had this Go year. Oh, he pulled off. He come back and got it. And he's got Stay another down. one. He's hooked up Stay again down. here. Stay down. Oh, I didn't realize it. Stay it, down. Was, it came back and got it. Stay down. That's what you do is like you know how. This is another big fish, Rob. Yes! Forest Wood Cup magic <gasps> right there. Look at that giant. Yes! Those two fish are two giant steps towards getting that 300,000. What is going on? Speaking of the roadmap to victory here, let's look at the general tire uh, roadmap to victory here. Timing and rotation, uh, so critical. Are you following behind somebody? Are you fishing fresh piles? When you get to a place, are they schooling? Are they not schooling? Should you leave? Should you stay? Execution and the efficiency of getting to those fish when, right when they hit the surface. And then uh, the flotillas out here and managing the traffic of these flotillas. Those flotillas affect the way you run your piles. If you're at one and you want to skip five of your piles and move way up to a, another one, you can't because you drag your flotilla basically through your other four or five piles. That affects your timing and rotation because you, you know the one you want to fish, but you can't fish it at that particular time because you don't want to drag your flotilla through the other ones. Here's the hometown favorite, Anthony Gagliardi. Missed him. Nice. The last time we were here, he's the one guy that won the title. He's on the herring bite. A lot of confidence with Anthony right now. This is his backyard. I have said this week, if anything happens to this herring bite, if it were to just suddenly evaporate today for some unknown reason, your money would have to be on Anthony. He has some sneaky stuff. That's an awful lot of action for one fish. There is going to be a lot more action. There's still a lot more day to fish and there's a lot of great anglers that are chasing Atkins right now. We'll be right back after a quick break.
Hey, ah! Wrong with CCs. <laughs> Golly, I got a three pounder trying to eat my topwater bait and a friggin' Osprey comes to get it. Go away, Osprey. Oh my gosh, really? Really? Welcome back everyone to our coverage here on Lake Murray for the 2017 Forest Wood Cup. $300,000 on the line right now. Justin Atkins, the man that started the morning on fire. If you would have asked him what a perfect morning would have been, he would not have been greedy enough to say, I want a four and a half and a five and a half pounder for my first two fish, and that's what he got. I don't know what you did during the commercial break there, Travis, but I was on my phone ordering my pencil poppers. You know what I'm saying? Now I got a fresh bait on, so here go. Being a professional fisherman has been my only dream since I was, you know, seven years old. I'm legitimately, some people say that. I looked at Larry Nixon and people like that were my icons growing up, and that's all I wanted to do. Um, I've never had a plan B. Come out as a rookie and make the cup. I, you know, that was my goal from the get go. I want to catch them as good as I can, but I just got, you got to make that cup. To come out and make it, you know, my rookie season was the statement that I wanted to make, and I made it. And uh, I put a lot of time in practicing for this event, and I just, you know, blocked everything out today and went out there and just focused on the fish. This is an amazing morning that Justin Atkins has had. I mean, just a magical mm. day three Forest Wood Cup final day run right here. Rob, one thing we've seen a lot out of Brandon is he is so calm. It's been amazing to see an angler this young have, have such poise. He's had some amazing finishes um, in past uh, Forest Wood Cup events. He is not going to let Justin just run away with this, even though Justin is having an absolutely amazing day so far. I will tell you, yesterday, he told me one of the things that concerns him the most about going into the final day of the Forest Wood Cup is that the morning is his window. That's when he does his damage. He hadn't had a lot of catches oh, in the afternoon. Put a flu going, quick. Put a flu going. Oh, I tried to lead him. Got yeah, that one. <laughs> Today I ran to what I thought was the best areas from yesterday first. And that didn't work out real well, so I went to what's kind of considered a community hole here, but they school real well on it. So I ran the community hole, and as soon as I pull up, hair were flying everywhere. Whoo! That's a five pounder. It might be bigger than five. Might be a six pounder. A three pounder was chasing a hare and I misled him. The six pounder must have been chasing him also and I called it. That's a giant. Let's get out there and get another one. Not so fast, Justin Atkins. Not so fast. It's been a comedy of errors this morning. Go over here and they come up here. Go over there, they come up over there. There's some coming up out here right now, but this is, the ones that come up here are big. We've seen them coming up here this morning and there's easily a 20 pound plus bag sitting right here, easily. Honestly, it's the most fish I've seen here yet. And ironically, it's the worst I've done. We have Travis's mother in the studio here, Sandra Fox, and there's a special story behind Travis's best spot right now. It's a spot we, we named Mama's Spot. I'm convinced the winning bag is right here. First time I cast out there on Mama's Spot, He's like, now when you cast out there, you're gonna have to just jerk it, you know? And I was like, I don't need to. He says, yeah, you will. And I said, no, I've already reeling it in. Hi, Mom. <laughs> hey, Trav. Thanks for showing me this spot. I need your help. Just stay focused there. It'll wait on you. There he is. That's a big one. Please be a bass. <laughs> I mean, strip and drag. I'm seeing that. Come on, baby. Come on. <laughs> oh, look at that. I told oh, you there man. are five pounders. Oh, baby six. All right, Travis. Boom. Six. Got to get them. There's four more of these out here. Promise you. Does that make mama proud? That makes me real proud, very proud. Now go get those other four. He said he wants to be the first angler to say he won the Forest Wood Cup pre-fishing with his mom. Don't go anywhere, we will be right back.
The FLW Tour is brought to you by Celebrating 60 years of fish finding excellence, Lawrence. GoPro, this is your life. Be a hero. The world leader in off road innovation, Polaris Off Road Vehicles. Yeti, built for the wild. And by TH Marine from transom to trolling motor. Bam! Four pounds. That one's not a keeper, and that one is a keeper. Bango blade. Yes, it's working. Two casts in a row, two fish. Boom, we're going somewhere now. And we are back on Lake Murray in Columbia, South Carolina for the 2017 Forest Wood Cup. Day three, championship Sunday. One of the top 10 anglers left is gonna be holding up a cup above their head and a $300,000 paycheck at the end of today. Uh, second and third place right now behind Justin Atkins, but both anglers have so much room left in their live well. They have the three right fish. They just need to fill out with two more. Quite a lot of pressure though right now. I mean, we're definitely coming down to the last few hours of the uh, Forest Wood Cup. Justin Atkins said a little while ago, he said, I've had the most amazing day of bass fishing in my career on the most amazing day that it could possibly happen the final day of the forest wood cup it's been the best fishing day in my entire life on the one day when it counts the absolute most there he is feels like a good one barely got him yes yes <laughs> Thank you, Lord. That might have done it. That might have just won the freaking cup. That's what you want the last day of the Forestwood Cup. Another giant. This man's had magic today. And he has kept that excitement and uh, poise through the entire event. Travis Fox started the day in fourth place. He said, I need 25 pounds to win this. He's going for the win, and he has three fish that are quality fish. He's doing the right thing, and I promise you for the rest of this event, he's gonna be doing this bigger fish tactics, looking for the two more quality fish to go for the win. If we can catch another one, we're gonna make it interesting. This is, this is what we like. We like a close ball game, and this is getting ready to happen. That's a good one. It's a good one. I think it's another dadgum five pounder. Had a girl. Come here. We want to take you home to show you to the fans in South Carolina. Oh. Come here. Fox has made it clear he's laying it all on the line on that one spot with these heavy duty right. techniques. One more like that, and it'll get serious. The last couple of hours of this tournament are gonna come down to, I don't wanna look back and have any regrets. I'm still really stunned by the fish by Gagliardi. I know he's disappointed in that right now and probably really scrambling, trying to pull out some stops to make something happen. We got us five, but great day, they're not big enough. I may just throw this double fluke the rest of the day and hope to catch two four pounders or something. I wasn't really focused. I mean, I was worried. I mean, I was really worried and that, that morning time just really shook me when, when I was around those big fish and couldn't get them to bite. And finally, I ran a little bit farther down, got a three pounder. At this point, I start kicking myself, saying, you know what, you should have you should have stuck it out. The weather had changed. We had some clouds that were coming in and it was it was a little bit windy and it was just right for what I was wanting there to do. And, and I just realized I'd wasted a good bit of time up at the upper end of the lake for no reason. We only got 18 minutes before we got to check in. I made a comeback, don't get me wrong, but it's come down to the wire. You know, I, I feel like I wasted a lot of time today. I got frustrated and I kind of, I got away from my game plan, but it's too little, too little too late, I believe.
The time is run out for our field of 10 on Championship Sunday. It's time to head to the scales and weigh them in, Rob. I've been to so many of these things. Those weigh-ins never get old. To see a guy awarded $300,000, I cannot wait to see how this day ends. What's up, Columbia, South Carolina? These are the best of the best of the 53 greatest anglers in the world. And it's all about one title that happens now. And look at the crowd we got tonight. Y'all came out for this one, didn't you? Well, we're going to have some fun with this weigh-in. This is going to be a great weigh-in. And it's interesting to see that no one has ever won this thing twice. A lot of people have an idea of what happened, but guys are catching them so fast like he was. You're saying, oh, man, it's a five. You know, it's a it's a six. You think it's a five or six when you, when you weigh them. But early on in the day, it's a two or three pounder when you throw it in the well because it's just a good fish. You don't realize how big it is until it hits that scale. And it blows your mind when you see these 20-pound blags coming in. A five-pass limit for Dayton, Tennessee's Michael Neal. 15 pounds, 13 ounces, 46 pounds, and 11 ounces. You got the lead. One of the biggest names in professional bass fishing, a resume that is unmatched. Florida Scott Martin, four today for Scott Martin. Worth nine pounds, six ounces, moves you to third place. Brian Smoke. Drift. Your reigning 2017 Angler of the Year. A five-pass limit. Wow! 18 pounds, two ounces. You got the lead. Come here, baby. How about another five-pounder? It's a keeper. Wow! Arkansas's Travis Fox. Heaviest stringer of the tournament. 21 pounds, 11 ounces. You got the lead. Man, he's bigger than I thought he was. We know who this crowd wants to see. Anthony Gagliardi, the 2014 Forcewood Cup champion, to dethrone Arkansas's Travis Fox. You're going to need 20 pounds, 10 ounces. You got three good ones. Let's see them. A five-pass limit for Anthony Gagliardi. 15 pounds, 2 ounces, keeps you in third place. Yes! That's how you start the last day of the cup. Yes! Justin uh. Atkins. We're looking for 19.8. A five-pass limit for Florence, Alabama's Justin Atkins. The rookie, his first season on the FLW Tour, and he puts himself in contention for the win. Five today for Justin Atkins, worth 22 pounds, one ounce. Wow, you got the lead. From Greenwood, South Carolina, Brandon Cobb. Two 19-pound stringers had you in first place with 39 pounds even. Number three. Wow! Number four is a good one. You're going to need number five. And if it's a kicker, we're going to have a lot of fun. Let's see it now. Four today for Brandon Cobb, worth 15 pounds, 10 ounces. Your Force Wood Cup champion is Alabama's Justin Atkins. Wow! The 2017 Force Wood Cup champion. He weighs in the heaviest bag of the tournament, over 22 pounds on the final day here at the Forest Wood Cup. Justin, it gives me pleasure to congratulate you and to present you with $300,000 for winning the Forest Wood Cup. Good job, well done. Thank you, sir. $300,000 richer is Alabama's Justin Atkins. I mean, it was just meant to be. You know, I'm sure Brandon, just like everybody else, had a lot of bites. He lands any one of them. You know, it's a different person up here, but, um, I mean, that's fishing, dude. It, it, it was so meant to be. I, I could just tell by the way things were going today that it was probably going to turn out really good, and you just feel it. Thanks, Columbia, South Carolina. This is the best crowd I've ever seen in my life. Justin Atkins, the 2017 Forest Wood Cup champion. <laughs>